Hi everyone, right, we're back over at Dave's house at the moment. And uh, this was the first Virago I bought. It's a 1981 750. And it will be one of the builds that will be coming up in the future. When we had the fire in the garage, Dave very kindly let me bring the bike over here and store it for a while. And I pulled it to bits a couple of years ago. But it's like everything, there's been a lot of, well that was pre-COVID. So, uh, but this will be the project of a future build and up for sale. Well, that'd be interesting to see how the time lapse works out. I put my Go GoPro just there and I've knocked it off about three times. Oh, never mind. Here we go. This is the components of the bike. Didn't take that long to pull to pieces. Yeah, this is the, um, this headlight came off was on the bike when it was in the fire but it wasn't too bad so I thought well it's a survivor so we'll include that these are the casings that I uh, sort of linished down the other year just make them look a little bit different had them powder coated didn't come out too badly so one uh, one bare engine stand now I should be using that for the next build this is an 1100 engine here I managed to pick up it's, uh, it's in pretty good order, although it does need a bit of welding on the bottom cases where they uh, corrode it. And there we go, that's the engine I should be using. Another 1100 sat there for a future project. So that's about it for today. And uh, just get all these things put in a safe place now. I've just picked up uh, my frame and wheels from Dave's house and went down to see my friend Paul <laughs> trying to get out the um, suspension arm, swing arm bolt going through. Got a lot of heat onto it. And it's down in there. And it's sort of come loose, but the trouble is it's actually seized inside the uh, swing arm pivot, I think. So it looks like we're going to have to do a bit of hacksaw work. Also as well, luckily that one came out easily enough. They're not too bad, but then we've got the fun of getting this one out. All it is, literally, is a pin pushed through. I don't think it's tapered. They just pushed it through in the factory and put a split pin on it. So uh, normally what it is, is get in there with a the hacksaw and just cut time and patience and just cut down each side. And that'll get that one out. And then it, if these don't punch out, what I tend to do is uh, drill them out until they get a big enough hole. And then a bit of heat and they'll come out then. Although it does look like it's a tapered hole, looking at the sizes. So uh, that time and patience will show. I right, just tried a socket on there. Still doesn't want to play and a lot of heat but you can see how it's starting to round the nut off so uh, next thing to do I'm going to drill down here with an eighth drill and then just split the nuts you can just about see here where the uh, pivot bolt for the swinging arm has opened up oh now a bit dark in there but uh, no can't see that one but it's actually seized in the middle here. So uh, I think it's going to be cut down here with a hacksaw and cut down here. And that, uh, that should release it then. That's uh, one hole drilled out, gone straight down the side in between the threads. So uh, mm -hmm. nice little chisel should sort that out now. Well, that was good. We got it loose enough so I could knock the socket off over it and get it off. You can see. That's quite still warm from the heat. And that's one way to get a stubborn nut off. You can see he's got drilled down the threads but that bolt can still be reused again so uh, we get the other one done now success you can now get uh, these bolts pulled out and start working a bit more 
I'm getting the rest of the uh, bolt off. And there we have it. One subframe. I suppose you could call that piece there. This is the monoshock on the Virago. A lot of people replace them with ones off R6s or similar bikes. But um, I'm going to have a good look at this one. With every chance it might still be okay. So they're pretty well made. And there we are. That's the back end of the frame. That can now get stripped and cleaned and then repainted again. Right, uh, time to start getting this swing arm out. It's hacksaw time. I've got it, uh, just got the frame gripped in the end of my little vise here. I did make this a few months ago. It just folds up to the right, which is quite handy. So we'll get this one, get the torque arm removed now, sneaky sods. There's a little split pin on there. So uh, that's the first thing to get out of the way. All right, well, I've got the, uh, funny enough, I've got the split pin out the other side with the nut. Often they won't come out, but sheer luck, I suppose. This is seriously tight. I tried moving the arm itself to loosen it, and it felt like the bracket was going to come off. So I think it's time. You can see your seat. Well, that's that off. Didn't go too badly. Bit of heat on it and it uh, came free. So uh, now it's time for the hacksawing. Just in there. So it shouldn't take too long. Luckily I've got some clearance there. So uh, I'll be back with you in a minute. Bringing out the big guns for this one. It's a bit more of an awkward space and I can't quite get a hacksaw in that area. So this little machine here is going to work a treat, I hope. <laughs> bit noisy, but uh, gets the job done. Yeah, well that's it cut. <laughs> Took a bit longer than I thought it would. I might have been easier using a pad saw to cut it with, but uh, we got there eventually. And there we are, that's the uh, offending article. It's loose in there, but uh, I think we're going to have to do a little bit of uh, serious work on it. But it'll get be it'll be getting new bearings and everything, so no problems really. Well, that's the uh, end caps off the end. Um, they can be refurbished. Just put some rubber in there in them. But I think we can safely say that the uh, swing arm bearing or the swing arm shaft and the bearings. It definitely needs a new one, I think. It's not looking too hot. And as much as I like recycling, I don't think I'm going to bother using those bearings again, but um, they're easy enough to get hold of. They're about, oh, <laughs> there's another bit of the cage. Yeah, a bit of sandblasting, painting and coating, and we'll get the old um, machine back on the road again. Right, that's that bit sorted out the way. We'll make a start now on uh, this bit just here, the uh, rear swinging arm. I should be cutting through just there and there. And then, I, as I said before, I think it's a, I'm sure it's a tapered bolt goes through, but the chance of getting out is literally nothing. Can't even heat it as well, because I don't want to damage the rubbers on the shock absorber. Although I may very well be Dumping that one and getting hold of one off one of the R6 type ones, but uh, now it's time to start hacksawing now. Well, that went better than I thought it would. <laughs> Not even five minutes to cut those two, seems I can get a decent purchase on it. Now, are they tapered? Looking at that side and then that side, no, I don't, don't think they are. Oh well. Um, what I should do with this one? I'll just put it in the drill press and just drill that straight the way through. That'll come out no problem. I should pull this all down, give it a good check. Not a bad system. 
a bit of a clean up and tidy up but if i'm not happy with it as i said it, it will get replaced right having to uh, do a bit of work on the uh, swinging arm here is it gonna focus hang on what it is when we're on doing it it was seized up in the spindle and it actually jammed the ends of the thread there's only about a quarter of an inch here so i'm just going to drill down through just weaken it and that will get it out then and then we'll do a bit of work on the old uh, roller bearing holders i think we'll get a bit of heat on that and a bit of gentle persuasion will get that out of the way well had to give up on that for the moment because i uh, wanted to drill straight down through the middle i got some long drills that'll go right down through but I think I need something more on the lines of a cobalt drill. So I'm now turning my attention to what I call the subframe. And we're going to see about getting these out. We'll get a bit of heat on that in a second. And uh, hopefully that will pull out. Well, that's good. That's pulling it out nicely there. I'm just going to have to substitute it for a socket because it's not quite deep enough. But uh, the bolt and these parts here, they're out of an old Cortina rear axle bush replacer and they do come in handy for all sorts of things well that went well it's uh, one down one to go all right well this is one of the uh this is part of the tool set for getting out the uh roller bearings because what i can do you get the end of it and you drop it down through and it goes right the way through <laughs> normally does anyway apart from when you're filming it oh so it falls on the floor miles away joins the uh, 10 mil spanners but what happens is when you push it round inside you can actually turn it round and then it's then facing the needle roller bearing and then the bolt goes in the far side and you just pull it out well that's the uh, two old bearing shells out now that's all ready to go off for powder coating but before it goes what I should be doing is I'm going to be putting drilling and putting some grease nipples one in on each side that way you know in the future it can always have a decent amount of grease in there So yeah, so just with <clears throat> a few bits and pieces made up, I mean, okay, not everybody has Cortina um, bush pressing tools in the kit, but uh, lengths of old rod, odds and ends and that, um, it's amazing what you can make up, you know, through these sort of jobs. But that's another bit out of the way, which is great. Uh, here we are in the garage again. I've uh, just been getting a list of bits and pieces together for the Project uh, Bobber Stroke Flat Tracker. Uh, these and a lot of the things I'm going to need. I've also been doing the costs as well. But the bike originally cost me £430. That was about well, I mean, eight years ago. So that will get filled in slow but sure. I was getting some work done on this uh, swinging arm, but unfortunately, that there is a bit rustier than I realised. So. Uh, what I've done is I've managed to went over to uh, my friend Dave's shed and I had another arm just there so that one's okay that'll do the trick just nicely <coughs> had to get a fair bit of heat on these in the end to get them out and I've uh, while doing it I've got the old bits here one of them oh. there's the other one and it is just a parallel bar there that uh, just fits right the way through with a, a split pin going through that hole there very unusual for you know a manufacturer but never mind 
and then oh, I had a bit of luck while I was in Dave's shed I found my CDI unit as well which looked in pretty good order that must be one of the newer ones they have a habit of going wrong but often it's just the uh, condensers in them go so you can change them and you know get them sorted again I'm just about to start going through the box of bits and pieces here this is mainly Virago stuff I did did buy some rubbers but unfortunately they're not quite uh, big enough or long enough so that's no problem quick trick to eBay again so we've got some bits here oh well, that's uh, of my friend Ali's Harley that's the old template for when I did the other footrest for the other bike. Mm, speedo cable, won't be needing that, be running a uh, GPS speedo. Right, that's the uh, that's a Virago one. That can be refurbished. I've got that one. Oh, I've got um. GSXR one here, so either will do. But I might go with the Virago because in it with the GSXR, you've got the uh, master cylinder on top of the handlebars. Um, oh, brake cable, brake cable, pipe. Right, these are off the uh, GSXR. I managed to get hold of a set of forks, calipers and everything for £200 locally which I thought was quite a good good deal I've got some P-clamps just there these are great for holding stuff on the bike but making it look professional as well so we'll put those down to one side Ah, a clutch slave cylinder one of these days hopefully I'm going to be able to fit it onto uh, this one here that's the other Tokiko brake caliper cables and wires that'll go in the electric box right this is the important parts yep. one head steady for the engine that's the front one so we've got the front and rears here which is good they can go for blasting and coating and then we have that's the uh, that's the sportster headlight and I should be using that on there this is off the one that got caught in the fire again but it's come out okay we'll get that coated blasted and sorted so that's another bit for it oh. We have some very handy riv nuts there, so they'll go towards it. That's the old headlamp shell of the Virago, but uh, a bit, bit too big for my likings. But it's it's a steel one, so you never know; it might get pushed into service. And oh, the Virago master cylinder. Good. Clutch lever. Again, these will all get blasted and refurbished and they'll come up nicely. Oh, horn cover. That'll be okay. They'll go in the powder coating pile. I, I often get bits and pieces done just for the sake of it and they, uh, they do come in handy a lot of the time. Oh. That's the old brake caliper mount. Now this is interesting because I've converted this one over and I fitted GSXR front discs and some performance calipers. These were the original calipers that came. They were supposed to fit on a wide glide 
but um, they never got sorted. And to my way of thinking, they're a little bit too the alloy, a little bit too flimsy. But uh, oh, that's one of those things when you buy aftermarket stuff. Ah, good. Right then, we definitely need that. Right, bottom of the headstock. And oh, that's one of those old spotlight carriers. <laughs> oh, there we are. Mirror. Yeah, I might just take the glass out of that. Get that powder coated. Right. One of the carb rubbers from the frame. I will be using that again. I'm not going fancy with the card, so I'm going to keep it pretty standard. Oh, that's just another half a clutch lever. Well, that, that's the mirror off my pickup, so that won't be getting used. And good. Right, there's the top yoke just there. That's great. So I can go in the powder coated. This is the original brake caliper from Brake Caliper of the older model Series 1 uh, Viragos, but I've got an idea. I'm going to be fitting a twin pot system on the original forks over here, but it's going to be a bit different to what it was. So that one won't be getting used. A couple of nice bits of uh, stainless tube in there. That'll come in handy for some systems. Good. That's the other rubber for the frame. These are getting hard to get hold of nowadays if you want to fit them. Oh, and another complete with the uh, aluminium casing on it. Right. That's one handlebar carrier that can be powder coated. Off one. No, no, sorry, that's the clutch side. There we go. Some horn covers, you just push them on. But they're plastic, so they won't take to powder coating too well. And another one. Oh, that looks a bit scabby. What's its ball? This one is not off the Virago, I don't think. It could be the only one, so not going to get used anyway. Oh, hang on, we've got a label on here. What does that say? Oh, not a lot. So I think. Oh, that's part of an old Virago exhaust, an original one. I kept that piece. I get both of those pieces as they would make good heat shields. So those will get powder coated. That's the old fuse box mount, so I don't think I'm not going to use that one again. And that's pretty much it in the box. So a couple of center stand springs. I shall um, probably get those powder coated, both of them. What I do is I stretch them so they've got gaps in between. Then when they blast them, the powder coat gets in between them. I think that's pretty much it for the Virago bits and pieces in here. So it's a bit more done. A few more things I can cross off the list. 